Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Seorius, and today we're going to be taking a look at the live action Avatar series that Netflix is producing. And we are less than a week away, but I wanted to share my initial thoughts going into the series because um, I did this, sort of the same thing with the One Piece show, and since there's more, I guess, not even anime at this point, more animated shows in the animated medium that are being turned into live action by you know, the conveyor belt of streaming services and Hollywood. I wanted to cover all that and more. So without further ado, um, I'm on Twitter right now. And of course, this is the big teaser that has everyone talking. Um, just because of the amount of faith a lot of people had for this show going in. Because despite everything going in, like it looks like the characters, like I will say the casting was pretty much on point. Um, the fact that they were able to sort of get the same amount of clothing right to the, I guess, the visuals, the visual spectacle of the Avatar series. I won't deny it looks promising. It looks very accurate to the source material, and I appreciate that. But there's only one little issue, and the issue that One Piece didn't have is... The fact that the original creators left this project and when I heard that news I heard that the creators were on board and they were redoing it with a series with Netflix and then they parted ways because of creative differences and hearing that news already I guess lowered my expectations for the show because I know that there are specific reasons why things happen especially within the creative field when the creators leave that's not a good sign. There has to be a good reason for them to leave, especially when it's creative differences. So what were these creative differences? That's what I think everyone was thinking at the time. And the more and more that information comes out and interviews with the cast comes out, you're starting to pick to piece together what ended up happening. And unfortunately, it has to do with the adaptation curse. And this is what I really think the industry struggles with right now and it's what one piece and a few other examples have really broken through and were able to manage to do and that's make a faithful adaptation that appeals to mainstream audiences who aren't familiar with the property to fans of the original property and with the avatar show you're treading on thin ice here because you're talking about people who this was their childhood and mine included too I grew up watching Avatar on, I know it makes me sound old, cable television. And I remember staying up late watching um, just episodes of Avatar when it would be airing, um, just catching up on the series. And I think one of my favorite parts about Avatar was the fact that it was serialized. So there was an overarching story throughout and each episode mattered because if you missed an episode, you'd be completely lost on what happened. And so... It was one of the, in my opinion, it's one of the greatest shows to ever grace this planet. And there's a reason why it has such a huge popularity. Now, the problem that comes with popularity is um, you want to make more of it. You want to continue to harness this property to make more money from a studio's perspective. So that's, or streaming service. So that's what Netflix did here is they greenlit a live action series, basically capitalizing on the success of the series. Now, I wanted to give this hope. I knew the creators left, but from what they showed, they were making the right choices. Compared to the movie, which everyone can agree is not a great adaptation. You can argue if it was a decent movie or not, but in terms of an adaptation, it was terrible. Um, it did not do the original series justice. And... I think the big thing too was the fact that the casting was just all over the place and did not make sense at all whatsoever. And so when the news arrived that we were getting a faithful cast, the you know, the costuming looks pretty accurate, the environments look accurate, and it really felt like they were actually pulling elements from the original series and putting it into the series, everyone was happy. Now, the issue I have now is the more news that comes out, and I will die on this hill, 
I think Hollywood, streaming service, entertainment in general, is going down a dark path. And it all delves with, it all, I guess, sur- involves, I think, every major franchise that you're familiar with. It involves everything um, with just the movie making process or, you know, the television production. And that is for everything that looks great with its vis- spectacular visuals, with complete CGI, um, like investments in CGI and making these amazing VFX, which these artists are working way too hard for what they're paid and they're overworked. I want to say that too. Despite all that, what boils down at the end of the day to making a movie good is the writing and the characterizations. And specifically with Avatar, Avatar is one of the most well-written shows I have ever seen. And everyone can attest to that. I mean, just check all the video essays on YouTube that cover this. You could find a bunch, even my friend, I'm actually going to plug my friend Fly Nimbus over here. Um, he has a great um, video on Avatar and talking about the world building there. But points aside, the problem with, I think, this adaptation is they're taking a lot of the storytelling decisions and it's flipping it on its head in not a good way. Because when it comes to an outsider taking this property, someone who didn't grow up with Avatar, they look at this and they want to put their own spin on it. But sometimes that's not necessarily good. And now you're coming out with people talking about, or the cast talking about Sokka and how they're removing the problems, the problematic nature of Sokka and how he views gender roles and how he views men because he's from a tribe that predominantly the men do the hunting while the women do the gathering and, you know, the nurturing. So, of course, he has this preconceived notion that men are stronger, men have to do this. But throughout the show, the original show, he meets Suki, the Kyoshi warriors, and he learns that women can not only be warriors as well, but the roles in which they help each other, it becomes more of a partnership rather than a traditional um, a traditional lifestyle. And it's not, what I love about the show is it doesn't argue one is better than the other. It's just giving you the, um, it's just bringing up the option of There are different cultures out there, and the more that you open yourselves up to these ideas, that's not necessarily bad. And over time, Sokka's sexist nature, as people call it, actually improves over time. And um, that's the whole point of the original show, is showing that these characters that are very flawed go on these arcs and transform. Now, Netflix has announced that that element of Sokka's character, which is integral to him growing as a person, is being toned back, dialed back, because it's problematic. And this is already raising a lot of eyebrows, people have already talked about this a lot, in which, why would you do that? The whole point of a character arc is to show a character who is flawed, and them growing gradually over time to become a better version of themselves. That is the basically essential, it's like an essential of storytelling and the fact that they're removing it is not only concerning for a lot of avatar fans but it also begs the question what else are they changing are they removing a lot of character elements um of a lot of shows because they don't want to delve into these topics to make few viewers feel uncomfortable at first but then use that as a vessel to sort of explore your world explore your characters and show sort of the relationships between them for example Katara actually has a lot of issue with Sokka and the way that he views women. It literally is how the story kicks off is they them fighting over um, them fighting over that fact. And that's how they actually meet Aang for the first time. So to have sort of the dialing back of what makes Avatar great is I think the the biggest hurdle when it comes to making this adaptation. And the more that it continues to go on, the more that you hear more um, about this show, it's not bringing in faith for a lot of people. And that's why I'm going to say it right now. I think this is going to be the second failed attempt from making an Avatar live action. And although this, I will say, will be better than the Shyamala version, by far, I think that one's just atrocious in terms of an adaptation. I don't think this one's going to do um, justice as well. And it's going to boil down to the writing. And it really is tragic because 
everything else feels like it's firing on all cylinders. Like costuming, great. Casting, amazing. Setting, fantastic. But what really matters at the end of the day is the writing. And when you don't understand the heart of the show, it falls apart. And that's the reason One Piece succeeded because Oda, who was the original creator of One Piece, got final say on everything they put out. If he said no, they would have to redo it and bring it back to him. And that's why the show resonated so, so well with so many fans is because it still captured the spirit of the original show. And based on what I'm hearing, it doesn't seem like this is gonna be the case with Avatar, but only time will tell. I mean, we have less than a week. I'm planning on doing a full review when that happens and I'll let you know if they actually manage to do something great or if you know our fears are come come to reality but overall my thing is I'm just gonna lower my expectations going in and hopefully things will be different so what are your thoughts um I have I think it's really funny when you go to <laughs> the comments and everyone's kind of agreeing here with the state of the show but um what do you guys think of this um do you agree with my take that the Avatar, you have to be cautiously optimistic with this? Or are you on board 100%? There's no way they can fail. It's too big to fail. And yeah, I think that's just pretty much it. Thanks, guys.